The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. The forces of darkness have suddenly manifest themselves visibly, including to people that maybe have no belief in God at all. And so that's why I'm absolutely convinced this is a moment of opportunity because God's giving us sort of one last, last chance to see where we're on, going on this train, to see the fact that the track is going off uh, down the ravine in time to stop and to turn things around. Fight the good fight in our post-Christian society, next on Life Today. But Betty and I welcome you to Life Today. I'm James Robinson, and uh, we have a guest that became my friend uh, uh, about 12 years ago, maybe 14 years ago. And we wrote a book together as a uh, very strong evangelical uh, Christian uh, with a Baptist heritage and with a Catholic, with a Catholic heritage and one of the most academically trained minds in the country, Jay Richards. And we wrote a book called Indivisible. And we wrote it at a time when uh, the future freedom was questioned. And it looked like we were taking a turn toward what would be Marxist control that was already ingrained into education, had hit education very hard, had hit higher education academics all the way up through college, had even seemingly taken over, had impacted too much in the once free market uh, world, in the entertainment community, the morality, marriage had been attacked, prayer had been attacked, faith had been attacked. And we wrote a book that was very, very, very popular, New York Times bestseller immediately. But many people said it's academically above a lot of folks. And even though it's just great, but we need people to write where it'd be like junior high school starts with it and everybody can read it through college age and love it. And Jay, we went back in prayer and came up with the book, Fight the Good Fight. Mm that there can be an alliance of faith and reason and it can win the culture war, which the culture war seems to be lost to what I would call the powers of deception. We're really not fighting political parties or candidates or individuals or other religious groups. Uh, we are fighting principalities and powers in the realm of darkness and deception. That's who we're fighting. That's what Paul said. That's what the Bible says. So we're in a spiritual conflict. And Jay, it appears today that the powers of deception, dissension, division, mm -hmm. of, of anger, and even murder, I mean, it's mm -hmm. just hideous what's happening, yeah. is, is beginning to prevail. It looks like freedom is going over the cliff. It looks like we're in the process of losing it. Mm -hmm. And it looks like people have forsaken the, the sound principles upon which you build a sound life, marriage, business, school, whatever. It looks like we're about yeah. to lose that. Would you agree? It does. It looks that way. And, um, you know, I think that's why a lot of people are in despair and feel like they sort of throw up their hands and think there's nothing that can be done. But as we say in the book, um, it's precisely in those times in history uh, when people suddenly wake up to the things that are around them. I mean, when we were writing Indivisible, for instance, we didn't realize we needed to write a chapter to explain that boys can't become girls and girls can't become boys, right? It, it didn't occur to us, you know, way back in the olden days in 2011, you know, that that would be the burning issue. Yeah. That is the burning issue. Uh, that's the bad news. And boys and girls competing against yeah. each other. No, absolutely. Yeah, because the denial of this, this basic reality. That's the bad news. Here's the good news is that the culture has gotten so insane that lots of people that aren't believers, people that might think of themselves as, as politically liberal and secular are all of a sudden saying, okay, we took a wrong turn here somewhere. Maybe they were on the train of the sexual revolution from the 60s all the way up until 2015. And then men started competing in girls sports and we started subjecting children uh, to gender reassignment surgery. And Which a lot can't of people- be corrected. Yeah. Once you do it. No, you, once you remove a body part, you don't get to just stick it back on. That's just the reality of the situation that we're dealing with. But 
what this does is I think uh, the forces of darkness have suddenly manifest themselves visibly, including the people that maybe have no belief in God at all. And so that's why I'm absolutely convinced this is a moment of opportunity because God's giving us sort of one last, last chance to see where we're on, going on this train, to see the fact that the track is going off uh, down the ravine in time to stop and to turn things around. So I'm, I'm strangely optimistic that, that we can do that. Well, we worked very hard and you put most the work in because frankly you knew the sources you know how to do it you know how to prove it so you took the time to go in and organize now betty is is not someone who just loves to sit around and read mm. well betty started reading the book and i mean she gets through the first chapter in the site she said james you gotta understand everybody has to read this book. Everybody can read this book. This book is not too hard to read. And this book, I can already tell, I can tell by the chapters. I can tell by having listened to you and Jay talk. Mm -hmm. This this answers all the questions. Yeah. It, it settles it, it really does. They're about eight to 10 chapters, okay? There may be 19, but there's about 20. So, but they're not too long. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're, they're they, we made sure they were like seventh grade level up. If you can read in junior high, you can read this book. <laughs> And you can understand this book. It's not that complicated. But it is not simplistic in the sense that it's, that it's trite. It's not. It is very, very sound. L listen, listen to the titles. Come, let us reason together. We don't reason anymore. The law is written on the heart stone and parchment, significance no. of that title. Well, so the heart is, of course, from, from Romans. God, uh, Paul says, uh, the, the Gentiles, the, the Romans, the Greeks, though they knew not the law, that God had not revealed himself directly to them, had the law written on the heart. It's this idea that there's a natural law. In fact, atheists know murder is wrong. You don't have to be a Christian to know murder is wrong. That's the idea. talked about nature's That's law. exactly right. And, and, the, the, and so you have natural law that's written into things because God's built it that way. Then you have positive law uh, written on the heart, uh, on stone, that is God revealing the law, right, to Moses, so we special revelation. And then parchment is what uh, scholars call positive law. And so in other words, the constitution, the laws that ideally are based upon the natural law and the divine law. And, and they record that. it. They yeah. record. And, and when it's in nature, it's written in what's created. There exactly. it is. It's, there it is. You can, can divide. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then the next chapter is God in the public bearing the sword. Let's pause mm -hmm. there just a minute. Yeah. Is there a right time to bear the sword? There absolutely is, and that's a, a big debate that a lot of Christians have. They say, well, you know, Jesus allowed himself to be crucified, so doesn't that mean we should be pacifists? But of course, Jesus <laughs> never said that, right? Uh, no. He didn't tell the centurion, okay, go put away your sword. You know, he did, uh, that's not what happened. And the reality is, it, it, say, the early Christians, when they weren't in charge of anything, what they would do to witness to their culture is going to be different from what we do in a republic where we can vote and we can influence others. Christians have a responsibility to the world of politics. That's, that's part of what this book is about. And politics sometimes involves the use of violence. Let's just call it that way. But that doesn't mean that, okay, when we, we go to war and we fight and kill, we can just do anything we want. There's still laws of war. And there's this long tradition called the just war tradition that not just uniquely Christian, but something that I think Christians need to take more seriously. Well, you're fighting to protect innocence and innocent lives. Yes. No question about that. Absolutely. Look what's happening. We got people bombing innocent people everywhere. Yeah. What happened in Israel is, is despicable. It it's is. It's unacceptable. What Iran is doing continually to us and others and funding it, yeah. and sadly then we're also funding it because we fund what okay. they do. Somewhere you put your foot down. I mean, Absolutely. if there's anybody that wants you to put your foot down to protect the innocent, it would be God. All right, don't you believe that government right now is becoming one of our greatest enemies mm. because it's beginning to take over. Yep. And one of the takeover plots is to tell them they're gonna take care of us. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest lie that came out of Marx's mouth. Yes. And people bought the lie. Absolutely. And right now he's being perpetuated. What makes government bad? Well, what makes government bad is when it gets involved in things that it doesn't have jurisdiction over. So basically, when it doesn't focus on its core competencies, defending the borders, right, but d protecting the innocent. That's the core competence of government. Uh, supporting everyone from cradle to grave and providing jobs for everyone uh, not only should the government not do that, it can't do it. And when it tries to do it, it actually messes up the system. The war on poverty is a perfect example. Started in the 1960s, it was supposedly going to 
end poverty. Instead, what it did is it created cycles, generational cycles of poverty by making people dependent. And trillions depend, Absolutely. Uh, supporting it. It's our money. That's right. And it's totally ineffective. Yes. It's actually damaging. Now, what we've done on the border now is we have invited illegals, illegals. Yeah. Not just immigrants, mm -hmm. right. but illegals to come across, criminals to come across. Yeah. They and they're being cared for when yeah. they get here. And it's like we're bringing them over, and now then we are arming them. Yeah. And ca can you believe such insanity is pervading in Washington? How did you let that happen? No, I'm no, I'm sorry. Uh, I've been there for ten years, and I've managed not to stop this. But it really is just absolute. Insanity. I mean, because this was not originally a partisan issue. I don't think in the 1990s, no matter who's in the White House, would not have just been opening the border this way. And of course, if I'm a poor Costa Rican and the doors open, then you know I'm going to make my way up here. That makes perfect sense. What doesn't make sense is that we're doing this to ourselves. There's just something but we're inviting with no way of protecting right. us from disease and from pedophiles coming in, sex traffickers, the drug peddlers, all of the fentanyl, everything coming across. Oh, absolutely. It, it, and, am and I too worked up no, about it? You, you, not too worked up. You're worked up, but you're justly worked up because you said something I think is absolutely crucial for everyone to understand. The United States is the number one consumer of sex trafficking. That's number so one. Sad. And Mexico is the number one provider on our southern border. So you don't it's it's not just people wanting to come over looking for jobs. As you said, it's the traffickers, it's the trafficking itself, it's the drug dealers, it's the cartels. Our leaders opened that border. That's right. They opened that door. It would be like someone going into your subdivision and open the door and inviting every criminal to come in and live there and plot there and, and stalk your children. It's that I'm sorry. Excuse me. It's worse than that. This is absolute, not suicide. This is, in my opinion, murder. You're opening the door to murder. Thousands have already died. Oh, absolutely. Of diseases yeah. coming across, hurts since they've come across, and all of the drugs that have come into our children have killed thousands of our children oh, yeah. of all ages. Do you care? If you care, I beg you, will you agree this is appropriate? Read this book. When my assistant walks in and says, everybody, now you gotta understand, she reads every famous author. We have them here. The popular authors, the greatest authors. She reads them all. She reads those books, she loves those people, she's worked for some of them been with me nearly 30 years. She says, this has to be read. Read it twice in short order. Betty, does everybody listening to us need to read this book? Absolutely. You know, James, I, I began the book, I've, and from the very, from the introduction even, I thought, wow, you could just let people read that, mm -hmm. and that would get them their hearts where God wants them to be, to be able to see truth for what it is. We have tried to turn this day truth into lies. Yes. We have tried to turn everything backwards. Government is trying to tell you how to think, what to wear, how to cook, what to drive, how to take, how to parent your children. We have just, I mean, it's just gone all out of control. But I, as I started reading, reading this book, I want to pause just for a few minutes after every chapter and say, okay, what did I just read? Mm. What got into my heart and my soul? What did I learn from that chapter? And then after I feel like God shows me what I, I, he wants me to see, I'm going to the next chapter. In other words, don't just read the book to get through the book and say, hey, I read it. Hmm. Give me a check mark. No, that's not the purpose of it. It's so that it can get down into your heart and become truth and life to what God wants us to do because we can change this world. God wants it for his people and for his children. We can correct the course faster than you ever imagined. Because in the clearest, simplest fashion, one of the most brilliant minds, two people from the most extreme backgrounds, very strong Catholic, very strong evangelical, Baptist, Bible Baptist, leader, both of us leaders in our areas, came together as one. We're family. We have brought leaders together across all lines. You cannot believe the correction that's being spoken to the Vatican, to the Pope, to the leaders, to the evangelical, to every denomination, to every pastor. And you know something? 
people with ears to hear are receiving because it's been delivered in unconditional, redemptive love. And that's what this book does. Jay is a brilliant man and a great writer. The next chapter is Choose Life. I'm the product of rape. I counted up, we have 60 in our immediate family. This fatherless child, the product of rape, never had a father, never had a home, didn't live on the street. But I met that father. Our three children met that father. This woman changed my life. When I look at where I came from of 10 years of hell and see how God used her, it's unbelievable. He can use the truth in this book mm-hmm. like he used the truth in you to change me. Absolutely. And he's used me to encourage Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> and I love you so, so much. much so. We have shared something about how we save life, protect life, strengthen life, enhance life, build life, protect life. A man shall cling to his wife. What about marriage? You don't redefine marriage. You don't redefine marriage as what it's between an animal and a person, two men, two women, several people. No, you know, you can do those things. You can be gay. You can be transgender. God didn't say you couldn't be that. God said it's not best. It doesn't line up with what is best. It's not best for you or those around you. He didn't say you couldn't do it. He didn't say you couldn't have 10 wives. He didn't say you couldn't chase 10 women. A lot of the people in the book that he used had problems with women. A lot of them, the problems they had brought them to trouble that went to the nation. Just because we can do things that are not best, you don't change it to say it's best when it's not. You keep telling people their principles. That's what this book does. In really 19 chapters, male and female, he created them. You don't regender them. Multiply and fill the earth. You can't multiply if you don't have a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How are you going to obey that command? That's, one of the, that's basically the first real plain commandment. Train up a child. You don't just tell them or teach them. You train them. We train dogs, but we don't train children. We yell at them. We don't train them. You can train them. A coach has to train his athletes. You don't just tell them and scream at them. You train them. Show them how to jump, how to run, how to block, how to play off a block. Does that make sense? Train up a child. All men are created equal. Jay, we go through all of these chapters. Mm -hmm. And do you believe that people who read this and just sit down and think and pray, they would understand how to win the good fight? I do. That's absolutely what we wanted to do. And I mean, the reality is we've been thinking about these issues for a long time. But we also knew that, look, people don't have all the time in the world. So how do we distill all of these issues, all the sort of background ideas so that people can grasp them, understand them, and then understand what to do with it? And I'm really optimistic. I think we've done it. I believe we have, too. Now, listen, Betty and I are here every day, not because we're 80 years old, married over 60 years. (laughs) We're not looking for something to do. And I'm not looking to be successful. I've had the most indescribably successful minister from the moment we started. Millions and millions of people have come to Christ and millions and millions of lives have been saved because of you, people like you. Evangelism, missions, all. You send the gospel. You send the message. You send the love. You send the help. We find the need. We proclaim the message, the truth, the way the truth, the life, but you make it possible. Yes, you do. I want you to get this book. I'm going to tell you something. We have to correct the course by this fall. We go out of this year without a change of course and direction and leadership. Listen to me. Freedom is over as we've known it. It's over. It doesn't have to be. Basically, Probably at the end of the year, I have 30 grandchildren. Grandchildren and greats. I'm trying to leave freedom for them. For everybody you love. I promise you, the truth that's here and is digestible and optical 
We'll do it. Yes, it will. I promise you. But we have to give it legs. Would you ask for the book today and get it? And here's what we're asking you to do. Would you help us rescue children, especially girls from sexual trafficking? Many of them right here now in our country. We've been helping Tim Tebow do it. But all over the world, we have saved thousands and thousands of girls and children and beginning to restore them and give them a job and a future. You know that. You've been watching us do it. You make it happen. $128 to rescue a child. We've got a group of people that give $320,000 to match what you give, which means $128, if you'll give it now, it'll rescue two. And I always ask, would you give 1280 and rescue 10? It's 20. You rescue 20. Don't tell me there are not a lot of you watching me right now that can't do that. Would you do it? We're going to send you Fight the Good Fight. We're going to send you a beautiful Bible. And we will send you the cup of water. This beautiful bronze, Jesus offered a cup of water. We're offering life. Please, go to the phone and go online, take your bank card and use it like a check. Make the gift God leads you to make. Do it right now. And do ask for the book. Human trafficking affects every country in the world. And in big cities like this, Around major train stations and adult entertainment areas, runaway teenagers gather trying to escape their abusive family environments, just longing for a community that will love and accept them. Traffickers target these children and offer them food and shelter in exchange for sex. And for a child that is desperate and vulnerable, this might seem like the only way out. These children are part of almost 50 million men, women and children around the world living in conditions of modern day slavery. But to Jesus, they are not a number. He knows every single one of them by name and he has a plan and a purpose for their lives. And that is why Zoe, together with our partners at Life Outreach International, work to end child trafficking through prevention, rescue and restoration. Because of your support, we are able to work with local authorities to rescue children from some of the most horrific situations imaginable and to offer them hope and a future. But there are still more than 10 million children that need to be rescued. And that is why we need your continued prayers and support, because you empower us to be a voice for the voiceless and to be able to continue our work to reach every person and rescue every child. Boy, it's just easy for me to love that worker. All those people. Why would you not want to rescue when there's 10 million easily just waiting. Would you rescue 10? 10 of the 10 million? To those 10 means everything. Here's what I want you to know because of people like you. We got $320,000. That's a lot. As a matching gift for whatever you give. Now go ahead and give 100,000. It'll be matched. 10000 But could you give like $1,280 for 10 Well, it'll be doubled immediately to 20 Maybe there are many of our viewers who can do it. That's right. And we always do it. Mm -hmm. We always do much more than we ask you to do. That includes the wells. And we started when they were 34, 3600 and it was hard. And we prayed. It got where it wasn't hard. I can't stop his blessings. I've never even gone after them. I go after him. He blesses me. I delight in his will. Bet he does. Would you rescue 10, now 20? Could you give $128 to rescue one and now two? Go right now and get your bank card or write a check. Would you do it or go online, call that number and tell us what you're mailing with a check and make it out to life? or put it on a card. And always use your bank card like a check. It's the way you should always use them. We will send you Fight the Good Fight. I hope you'll 
ask your friends to go online and order one and read it immediately. I hope everybody you know will read this book soon because we can start to turn around in the next few weeks, not just months. And it has to happen by year end. It has to. There has to be an adjustment, a major adjustment. Our freedom's over. I promise you. Yeah. I'm not exaggerating. It's that serious. And this is, it's a cure. Yes, I contributed big time, but Jay Richards was the key through which God flowed the wisdom and truth that we just need to see in simplicity, okay? Ask for it. Go right now. Rescue someone. Save the future of freedom for an individual, for our nation, for the world. Innocent children and young people longing to be loved and cared for are being abducted and sold at the hands of violent predators forced into the evil industry of human trafficking. Through Mission Rescue Life, you can reach out to warn children who are at risk for sex trafficking, rescue those already enslaved, and restore young lives and give them a future. With a generous $320,000 matching gift, now your gift of $128 to help rescue one child can be double to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help save one child from the horrors of human trafficking. And a $32 Mission Rescue gift will be doubled to 64. With your gift today, we'll send you the brand new book from James Robinson and Jay Richards, Fight the Good Fight. This book will open your eyes to what's at stake and the unwavering truth that God isn't finished with our nation. It's time to fight the good fight and return to unshakable biblical principles. With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the NIV large print thin line Bible. This easy to carry, easy to read NIV Bible with comfort print allows you to take in more of God's word each time you open your Bible. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help save 20 children. And you may request our inspiring bronze sculpture, a cup of water. Please call, write, or make your gift online. Tomorrow, we're going to talk to you some more. You need to tell everybody to watch the program, and you need to tell everybody you know to get this book. Get in it, get at it. Jay, thank you. I'll be talking to you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Get your friends to join. For over 60 years, Life Outreach International has shared the transforming truth of God's love in both word and deed. Call now to become a friend for life. Your monthly support will help us continue to bring God's love to a world in need. The forces that are attacking the family have continued. Jay Richards encourages us to unite with other truth seekers to fight the good fight tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.